So my research has been focusing on menopause symptoms, um, both in healthy women and in breast cancer patients. I've been trying to understand you know, what causes some of the common symptoms and how to treat them. And the symptoms that I focus on as a psychiatrist and somebody who's interested in the brain manifestations of the hormone changes that women experience um, are hot flashes, sleep, and mood. So what differs is the way that the symptoms, um, what, what causes the symptoms. So for healthy women who are going through the natural menopause transition, it's very normal normal for them to have hot flashes and some women will have sleep problems and a smaller subgroup will have depressive symptoms and they can kind of come and go and that can last for an extended period of time through the menopause transition. For women who have breast cancer, it's much more common that the reason they have symptoms is because some of the treatments that they take which cause these symptoms and so they tend to be more abrupt onset. Um, sometimes more severe, but also in the context of a very serious illness and complex treatment. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is that women who have their ovaries taken out for, you know, other reasons, gynecologic reasons, will also have abrupt onset of symptoms. And, uh, you know, men who have prostate cancer who go on hormones to withdraw testosterone also get all these same symptoms. So in the cancer center, it's a, not just a women's problem. So the highlights of that talk is that um, menopause-related sleep disturbance is a condition of sleep maintenance, so not usually a problem of falling asleep at the beginning of the night, but a problem of staying asleep. So people wake up mostly due to hot flashes and sometimes are very uncomfortable and sometimes have a hard time falling back asleep, and that's the characterization of the problem. The other thing is that even in the absence of hot flashes, we do think that there's some underlying hormone changes across the menopause transition that contribute to this sleep fragmentation or sleep disruption. Um, so that there are sort of several reasons, the most common reason that somebody will have trouble is because of hot flashes. And also something like sleep apnea, which can cause awakenings in the middle of the night. So there are a number of causes, um, but all of them are treatable. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the good news is that if people realize that this is uh, something they're dealing with, they don't see it as being normal, it's something they have to suffer through, but something that they can pursue treatment for. Um, then you know they should be speaking to their clinician, their primary care doctor, or gynecologist, and pursuing treatment, um, which can include treatments that are non-medication-based treatments, that are behavioral treatments, sleep hygiene strategies, uh, behavioral therapy, cognitive therapy for insomnia, very effective treatment, or medications that target hot flashes, um, which therefore improve the sleep, or medications that just treat the sleep problem, you know, the hot flashes maybe aren't able to be treated uh, fully. And when somebody takes hormones, um, estrogen is hugely effective for the hot flashes and the sleep problem. The non-hormonal treatments for uh, medication treatments for hot flashes, the most common one being the serotonin-based antidepressants, the SSRIs, SNRIs, are also very effective for the sleep problem and the hot flashes. And the one that's FDA approved for that is paroxetine. Um, but there are uh, all the other SSRIs, SNRIs have been studied and shown to be effective. So lots of important ways to help people get better sleep.